Have you ever been betrayed? I hope not. It's a nasty feeling that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Unfortunately, I had to face this personally, and it would be fine if it were some trifle. All people make mistakes, but what happened in my life and how my closest people deceived me? This is something. I promise that everyone who is involved in this will regret it very much. This is my story. Enjoy watching it. I'm Todd, a quite attractive and intelligent guy, or at least I consider myself so, and I have a healthy self-esteem. I am a fairly successful programmer in one of the commercial companies. The amazing thing is that I can work only 50 minutes a week and still earn a substantial amount of money for it. However, it doesn't mean I'm idle the rest of the time. I constantly develop and learn something new every day. I was the guy who made it. I've read many motivational books, watched interviews with wealthy people, and ultimately pulled myself out of poverty. Therefore, I cherish everything I have, and every day I am grateful for what I possess. But perhaps my greatest achievement in life is my wife, Judith, who is four years younger than me. She's 25 and I'm 29. She's a model, participating in various advertising campaigns, with a significant following on social media, and she generally enjoys her life. Judith has a slender, sun-kissed body, well-toned thighs, and a very nice bust. But she wasn't always like that. Her life changed dramatically after meeting me. When we first met, she was an ordinary cashier in a store with no ambitions or goals. Still, I noticed that spark in her and helped ignite it. Even then, I held a good position, and though I didn't earn as much money as I do now, I could afford a lot. For me, Judith quit her job as a cashier, and I found her an excellent producer who helped her succeed on social media. Now our combined incomes allow us to live a luxurious life. This might sound like some success story and other nonsense, and honestly, I thought so too, until life smacked me in the face with reality. I have friends from school, Philip and Alan, who were with me up to a certain point. At 18, we started our first business, an ice cream stand, but unfortunately, it quickly went down the drain. Six months later, we launched another business selling hot dogs, but after five months, we had to close it. After that, there were more attempts, but all of them were futile. At 21, I realized that something needed to change, so I entered the IT field, which was new for me, but I knew it held a future. My friends didn't support my idea, saying, it's a waste of time. You need to deal with real things, create something of your own, not work for someone else. I disagreed with them because I thought ahead. I understood that becoming a skilled specialist would enable me to start my own project in the future, and it turned out that way. Philip and Alan continued to try building a business. Now they have only one fast food stand that has been holding on for three years, bringing them profit, which they split in half. However, compared to the money I'm making, their profit is peanuts. Instead of exploring something new and moving forward, they, like stubborn sheep, continue to hammer in one spot. They succeeded, but I don't think it's the result they were hoping for. While I could afford to travel to different countries, buy expensive clothes and cars, dine in restaurants, and have a wife with model looks, these two continued to live in the city, facing stress from their daily affairs. I'm not angry with them for not wanting to join me. It was their choice, and I understand them. Now we maintain a connection, but it's not like it used to be. They can come to my place on weekends, sit on my leather couch, and we can play video games and discuss mundane things together. Despite our differences, we maintained a good relationship and often met, mostly at my place. They liked my affluent home, but I didn't immediately realize that my wife was also appealing to them. For me, meetings with Philip and Ellen were like a distraction. They were simple guys without education, and I liked that I could sit with them have a beer, and talk about all sorts of nonsense. I didn't try to boast in front of them. On the contrary, I tried to lower myself to their level and be down to earth. Judith was never against me spending a couple of evenings a week with friends. She had her own girlfriends, and she often hung out with them. Judith and I were very hospitable, so our home was never empty. One evening when I was returning home, I was stopped by a neighbor named Jimmy. He was a director. He stopped me and asked, Todd, how are you? 
I don't want to seem intrusive and most importantly, don't think I'm spying on you, but I noticed something strange. When you're not home, a Ford often parks near your house. I even took a picture of it. Ford often parks near your house. I took his phone and started looking at the photo. The photo showed a white Ford, my friend Philip's car. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson, for your attention. I'll try to figure out what's going on. You're welcome. Oh, wait, may I ask you for a favor? Could you, when you're home during the day, keep an eye on my house, and if you see the car, let me know? No problem. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. This was clearly a red flag, and it couldn't be ignored. Why is my friend coming to my wife while I'm at work? With this question in mind, I entered the house where Judith greeted me. She came out in a white robe, and saying a word began, Darling, I'm so glad you're home. I have a surprise for you. You need to pull this string. I pulled the string, and before me unfolded a work of art. Judith bought a new sexy costume. It was a nurse's costume. I think you're a bit tired, but I know how to fix it. First, you need to take a shower and then I'll be waiting for you in my medical office. I quickly took a shower and Judith and I spent an unforgettable night. Such spontaneity made all my thoughts fly away and I completely surrendered to the moment. The next day, I didn't have to go anywhere, which meant that Judith and I would spend the whole day together. I thought that perhaps yesterday, Philip dropped by to pick up something he forgot and just stopped by quickly. At least that's what I wanted to believe. I didn't want to entertain the thought that Judith could cheat on me, especially with my friend. Judith and I had quite an ordinary day, and in the evening we planned to relax by watching a movie. However, our plans were interrupted by Alan, who wanted to invite us somewhere. Buddy, let's go to the club tonight. It'll be fun. You can bring Judith along. I declined, not only because Judith and I had plans for the evening, but also because I didn't enjoy going to clubs, especially with Judith, who would find it boring since Philip and Alan didn't have girlfriends. Philip tried to build relationships and even got married, but in the end, he cheated on his wife and she left him. Alan just had bad luck with girlfriends and his longest relationship lasted only a year. I always told them that if they wanted to go out together, they needed to find girlfriends. They would just nod silently and say they'd find someone soon. I told Judith about Alan's proposal and noticed her disappointment. Apparently, she wanted to go out and have some fun, but I didn't pay much attention to it. The next day, I had to go to work. I kissed Judith and left. At noon, my neighbor Jimmy called and reported, Todd, a car is parked near your house again. I don't know exactly when, but I'm calling to let you know. Thanks, Jimmy. How long will you be home? All day. All right. If it's not too much trouble, could you call me when you see that the car has left? Sure, I'll keep you posted. We said goodbye and my mind was once again flooded with doubts. Five hours had passed since Jimmy's call and during this time I was in a state of uncertainty. Suddenly the phone rang. Todd, the car is leaving. Two men got in. I thanked Jimmy and hung up. Now there were no doubts. My two friends were coming to my wife when I wasn't home. But if I initially thought it was only Philip, now I realized that Alan was involved too. At first, I tried to reassure myself with the thought that maybe they were preparing a surprise for my birthday. However, my birthday was still four months away. Wasn't it too early? To avoid unnecessary panic, I decided to call an acquaintance and asked for a couple of video cameras and a listening device. After work, I picked up the equipment. He asked why I needed it, and I made up an excuse, saying it wasn't for me. As I drove home, my hands were trembling. I even felt ashamed that I would be spying on my wife because I was so certain that she couldn't betray me. Entering the house, Judith greeted me joyfully. We had a delicious meal and went to bed where we engaged in sex again. During this time, I didn't notice anything unusual about her. Usually when a woman cheats on a man, she changes in behavior and character. But my wife was as usual, even better. The next morning, Judith was getting ready for a promotional video shoot and I went with her. On the back seat of my car, there was a bag with the forgotten video cameras. During the trip, Judith asked about them. 
What's that you got there, kiddo? It's some stuff from work. I needed to throw it away. I'll do it later when I leave. With this statement, I killed two birds with one stone. During the time Judith was working, I went home. Time flew by, and I didn't realize that two hours had passed. However, all the cameras were set up. One in the bedroom, another in the living room, the third in the kitchen, and the fourth outside. I completely forgot that I was supposed to pick up Judith. As I stepped out of the house, I noticed a white Ford pulling up, and Judith and Philip got out. I called you twenty times. Where were you disappearing to, Todd? Judith said, and I checked my phone. Indeed, there were twenty missed calls from her. I apologized, but Judith just walked past me silently. At that moment, Philip approached. Dude, you messed up big time, and I had to handle things myself. Sorry, just got caught up. It was an urgent call, and I needed to fix a project. All right, no big deal. I can help you out, considering how many times you've bailed me out. We said our goodbyes, and I went back into the house. The whole evening passed in a silent atmosphere. Judith was upset with me for not picking her up, so I tried to apologize. You promised to pick me up. Why didn't you come? There was an urgent order. Forgive me. I won't forgive it next time. We hugged each other and went to bed. I felt ashamed that I could suspect her of something. I didn't fully believe it, thinking that Jimmy, the old man, let his imagination run wild. However, since he provided me with photos, I had to personally confirm everything. At night, while Judith slept, I decided to unlock her phone and check her messages. I found nothing suspicious in them. The phone was clean. I went to sleep with a clear conscience. Two weeks passed since I installed cameras in my house. While I was at work, I kept an eye on what Judith was doing at home, and everything seemed fine. Nothing suspicious, not a hint of anything. After that night, I decided to check Judith's phone a couple more times, and it turned out to be clean. No signs of infidelity or communication with my friends. Everything was normal. We hung out with Philip and Alan, spending quality time together. Judith worked, and we went out to the city, visited various interesting places, and overall lived a peaceful life. One day at work, I decided to check the cameras. I was already tired of doing this. Every time I understood that I wouldn't find anything, and it seemed pointless. Other thoughts started boppering me. What if Judith finds the camera and thinks I'm spying on her and don't trust her? I looked at the camera and saw Judith opening the door. Unexpected for me. I turned on the outdoor camera and saw a white Ford parked near my house. Philip and Alan were standing on the porch. Judith happily greeted my friends, and they entered. I unplugged the listening device, which was installed in the living room under the coffee table. Judith went upstairs to the bedroom, while Philip and Alan took off their shirts and sat on the couch with bare torsos. Judith changed in the room, and I saw her taking out a sexy costume from the wardrobe the same one she wore for me the night before. I watched everything without taking my eyes off, but at that moment, I decided what I would do with them. It was time to take out the trash, quite literally. I called a person with an untraceable number, whose name couldn't be disclosed, but let's call him Mr. Keller. He specialized in discreetly disposing of trash on request. I called Mr. Keller and outlined the entire situation, my voice trembling, and the phone almost slipping from my hands. All right, we'll be waiting for you at the payment spot, and the moment you pay, the car will head to your house and collect the garbage. The conversation was brief, and the cost for such a service was not small. I needed to move quickly to the payment location. Fortunately, I had enough cash in my car for this service. I decided to check the cameras and saw my wife already on her knees, pleasing my friends. I felt like I was going to be sick, because if I hadn't found out, I would have come home in the evening and kissed her. I drove like a maniac, as if I were not myself. I was shaking all over, and it felt like I could faint. I felt so bad, so hurt, and I even shed a tear. I couldn't understand how my school friends and my wife could betray me like this. I quickly arrived at the location, an abandoned building. I needed to leave an envelope. So I placed the envelope with money under a stone and sent a message. Eggs laid. Literally, within the next minute, 
I received a message. My chicks flew out of the nest. I rushed back home, leaving the car nearby, and started observing from a distance. I checked my phone, and at that moment Jimmy called, saying there was a white Ford near my house. I told him everything was fine. I turned on the cameras again and saw two men enjoying my wife on my leather couch. It felt like I was watching an adult movie. It hurt again, but I sensed that justice would prevail soon. Ten minutes after I arrived home, a white van pulled up. Three sturdy men, dressed in all black and wearing balaclavas, immediately stormed into my house. One thug knocked out Philip with a single blow, the second subdued Ellen, and the third silenced Judith. They were knocked to the floor, tied up, had bags put over their heads, and quickly carried away in the van, which sped off. I witnessed it all through the cameras and marveled at their professionalism. They completed the job in about 40 seconds. All that was left for me was to wait a couple of days for the results. I decided to check with my neighbor to see if he saw anything, and luckily he saw nothing. I returned to work, and on my way back home in the evening, I called the police, reporting that my wife was missing. Before that, I had broken and discarded the phones of Judith and my friends, making them untraceable. The next day, a tow truck removed the white Ford from my house. I informed the police that, as usual, I returned home but found my wife missing without any clues. All neighbors in the area provided their statements, confirming that the white Ford frequently approached my house when I wasn't home. I was surprised to learn that not only Jimmy had seen this car near my house. Since the car was registered under Philip's name, he became the primary suspect. Initially, they also suspected me, but when they called my workplace, they found out I hadn't left on the day of the disappearance. While the investigation was ongoing, I backed up all the camera recordings onto a disc and hid it well. Four days later, I received an anonymous video showing three bodies being delivered to the destination point. The video depicted them being taken out of a van with their eyes, hands, and feet tied in an empty field. All three were crying and pleading for mercy, and I found it amusing to watch. Since my main condition was that no one should die, they were left in the desert with their hands untied and instructed not to move for an hour. After that, the vehicle left, and what happened to them next was entirely up to them. They were transported in a van from Nevada to Texas, and at that point, I no longer cared whether anyone would return alive or not. A month later, the case reached a deadlock, and the detective suggested that my wife probably ran away with Philip, having some kind of affair. I accepted his version. No one was looking for Alan because he had no parents or even a girlfriend, and their joint business had collapsed as no one managed it for a month. I didn't attempt a divorce, as it would raise suspicions. Instead, I hired a lawyer, and we started the process. If Judith didn't return home within a couple of months, we could file for divorce due to her disappearance. A month later, I was called in for questioning at the police station for identification. They showed me two men and one woman, all from a photograph. I didn't immediately recognize my wife and two friends in them. They looked like they aged 20 years more than they actually were, and I found it amusing. They were all in worn-out, torn clothes, emaciated, and overall looked terrible. I identified all three and asked the investigator how they were found and where they were. He said that in Texas, a couple of naked savages robbed a gas station stole someone else's car, and drove off in an unknown direction. Exactly 24 hours later, the car was found by the roadside. The thing is, they stole a car that wasn't fueled, and they couldn't drive for long. Eventually, they were arrested and are currently serving their sentences in prison. I sighed and thought to myself, at least they're alive. I didn't expect this outcome. I thought they'd have enough sense to make it home intact and unharmed. Instead, out of desperation, they chose to commit a crime. I was horrified to realize that these people had accompanied me for a significant part of my life, and I didn't feel sorry for them. Seriously, who could pity them? I managed to get a divorce. I can't say it was easy, but I succeeded and I officially became a free man. I traveled to Texas once to look each of them who betrayed me straight in the eyes. All three seemed completely out of it but the most amusing part was that none of them even suspected it was my doing. 
None of them considered it could be revenge for their betrayal, and it even saddened me a bit that they didn't realize the gravity of their sin against me. I was glad to stay on the sidelines, but when I looked at these people, they were utterly unfamiliar to me. They were lost individuals. When I directly asked Judith if she had betrayed me, she quietly said, never. And I smiled and walked away. I honestly expected a struggle. I thought they'd return home and realize I was the one who sent them to the desert. However, they turned out to be so weak, so foolish, that they dug themselves into an even deeper hole. I only gave them an opportunity to show themselves how they would act under stressful conditions, but they turned out to be cowardly and chose to commit a crime instead. I don't know how I would have acted in their situation, but I'll say this. I wouldn't have found myself in such a situation. I value people around me and I respect and always speak the truth. But if someone crosses me, I won't stay silent. I'll take action. I moved to Florida and plan to live here for at least a year. If I find a girlfriend, that's good. If not, that's also good. I've become more laid back about life. I have enough money to live comfortably until old age and not deny myself anything. I'm intelligent and cautious. I continue to evolve, and I want everyone who hears my story to evolve, regardless of circumstances, to make the right choices for themselves. If life throws garbage at you, grab a rake and clean up. Garbage belongs in the trash, not in your life. Thank you for listening to my story. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.